in Seattle every single night. An estimated one to 2,000 people are exploited through prostitution and sex trafficking. That's according to a local nonprofit, REST, which tracks data here in the Northwest. Women working in the sex trade are easy targets for people looking to exploit them, often homeless, victims of sexual abuse, violence, and struggling with addiction. Tonight, a former prostitute goes on the record. She has lived it and survived. We're not naming her or showing her face, and we do want to warn you that what you're about to hear is not appropriate for young audiences. All I know is prostitution. That's all I know. My 18th birthday, literally, is the day I got into this industry. That is all I know. So you've had a, a traumatic life. Yeah. You've had a life of drug abuse before 18, sex abuse, emotional abuse, emotional trauma, mental health issues. So what happened when you turned 18? I was still in foster care system. Um, I was still on drugs very heavily. I was sleeping outside, I was homeless. I figured why not go and make money doing something I'm already doing than be a drug addict on the streets. Tell me about a typical night on the street for you as a prostitute. Usually I'm in my car or um, in a hotel room and I'm seeing Johns left to right, back to back. And the average night, I could make up to $1,000. So to make the money that I had to make for my pimps, I'm seeing at least 10 johns a day. Explain why that made sense to you at the time versus being an independent it, commercial sex worker. It made sense to me because I felt like my family gave up on me a long time ago. And so when I got with the pimp, I felt like, well, if I give him all my money, like they say that's what you're supposed to do, he's gonna take care of me. He's gonna protect me, he's gonna love me, and he's gonna show me how to be a business person. That is not what happened. That is not what happened. You've seen a lot of violence yes. working as a prostitute. Tell us about what has happened to you. I would do something that would trigger him, and he would abuse me to the point where he would black out and there was no coming out of it. You sent me a picture of IVs in your arm. Yeah. From the hospital. Yes. What happened? Um, so he punched me so bad in the face that my eyes swelled up, that I could not open my eyes for about a week, maybe longer. You even put a post online saying, I could have called the police, but instead I called my dad. Yeah, and from there, the police started watching me. They were investigating, but they were concerned for my safety. They got me in a sting operation. They really broke down everything to me. They, they really did. This man who, sat there for six and a half years, like I could honestly start crying, took my money that I sat there and risked my life for and did nothing for me. And while he was in prison, he gave me to his brother, to his friend, for them to keep profiting from me prostituting. And it's, it's just, it's pathetic. That is trafficking. Yeah. You were being that trafficked, is literally trafficking. and you didn't even know. I didn't even know. I just thought that they were taking care of me. You do have someone taking care of you. Yeah, I. so when I stopped having a pimp, I met some people, and they were like, OK, well, I want to take care of you, so you don't have to be seen by a bunch of different men a day and selling your body and all that. So I accept, you know. We're talking about a sugar daddy. Basically. Yeah. This is the situation that you yeah. have. In your mind, is that different than prostitution? Um, yeah. With a sugar daddy, you're not out just accepting money to have sex. You are giving off an experience, a persona of being somebody's companion. What's next for you, Dad? What's next for me is the exit plan. My exit plan is really um, hoping to have enough money of my own saved up and invest in a business, invest in myself, and not have to come back to this life. No kid wakes up at five years old and wants to be a prostitute. No kid wakes up and just wants to be a bad person, so, you know, so. I want to stop you because being a prostitute does not make you a bad person. Yeah, yeah. I, you are I, not I a bad person. That. Yeah. For young women who are involved in commercial sex work, prostitution, or being trafficked, what's your message to them? Don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to walk away. The money is not worth it. 
I want to thank her for her courage in coming forward with her story and tell you that help is available across Western Washington. These are just some of the agencies that you or someone you may know can call for help. Rest, Real Escape from the Sex Trade, YWCA Gender-Based Violence, Aurora Commons, and the Organization for Prostitution Survivors. There's also a 24-hour hotline, 206-451-7378. For more information, text us. Text the word ESCAPE to 206-448-4545. We will send you a link with all of this information. So it's not